Hello, welcome back to my podcast, The AJ Kalis Show. Last week, I had mentioned that I named my podcast after a friend of mine uh, who I've made a really big impact in his life. And some people thought that was a joke. And I was like, oh, shoot, I don't want people to think that this podcast is supposed to be just all laughs and I'm not, no, I'm not gonna be serious. So I decided to change the name of the podcast, at least it, initially. And so when I went to go call up my friend, Weston, and tell him that I'm changing the name of the podcast, this was his response. Dude, I'm sorry, I won't change it. I'm sorry. Work so hard! Dude, I won't change it. I'm so as you can see, it didn't end well. So I'm gonna just keep the name, The AJ Kayla Show, for the foreseeable future. And if I decide to change it later, I will, but for now, it's staying. Now that that's out of the way, I hope that you're doing well, that you're staying safe and sane and definitely healthy. Uh, I know that there's a lot of confusion out there and a lot of people have had questions about whether or not, you know, people should open up the economy or go back to work or what the procedures should be. And there have been a lot of ethical dilemmas that we haven't really been able to answer quite as well as we would like. And in the midst of all of that confusion, I thought it would be good upon myself to read The Fundamentals of Ethics. It's a book that I read in my undergrad, but I decided to reread it for right now. And so after rereading it, I learned everything that there is when it comes to ethical dilemmas. So wanting to impose wisdom on the world based off of my newfound knowledge, I decided to go to Instagram and ask them, everyone on my Instagram, to send in ethical dilemmas, either ethical dilemmas that they see in their life or they just see out in the world. And I am going to answer those ethical dilemmas with a random assorted chapter from the fundamentals of ethics. So people will submit a problem and I'm going to answer that problem in accordance to some sort of ethical principle or theory and uh, we'll see how it goes. But I do know that when you read a book that is the foundation of something, then you know everything about it. So let's jump right into it. All right, here is the first ethical dilemma. Ooh, okay. Y euthanasia if you ballsy, the trolley dilemma if you basic. <laughs> I am not basic. We are not going to be doing trolley problems. They're, they're overused. So let's, let's do euthanasia, okay? Oh, let's not do euthanasia. Let's, let's talk about how we would answer this problem with one of the ethical principles. All right, here we go. Here it is. So according to the fundamentals of ethics, we're gonna be answering the, the ethical dilemma of euthanasia with natural law ethics. Um, this one actually is kind of easier. So let me read to you what natural law ethics are, just real quick. The normative ethical view that says that actions are right if and only if they are natural, and wrong if and only if they are unnatural. People are good to the extent that they fulfill their true nature, bad insofar as they do not. So I would imagine that the intent and purpose of a person is to live. And so doing anything that would prohibit someone to live would be immoral. Uh, natural law ethics doesn't seem to presuppose the quality of life, nor does it seem to propose that there is anything good um, intrinsically except for that which is natural. So living is natural, so you should not perform euthanasia. Boom. There we go. All right. At a restaurant, should you fill up a water cup with soda? What? No. Okay, well, I'm not going to give my own opinions about what you what you should do. I'm, we're only going to be answering these based off of the chapters from the Fundamentals of Ethics. <clears throat> hedonism. Hedonism tastes good. Let me explain to you what hedonism is according to the Fundamentals of Ethics. Hedonism is the view that pleasure is the only thing that is intrinsically valuable and pain or unhappiness is the only thing that is intrinsically bad. So if you're going to a restaurant and you have a water cup and you want soda because you think soda tastes good, then you just do it because your happiness is the most important thing for you. And soda is a really good tasty beverage. So there you go. All right, next ethical dilemma. Am I justified in leaving my house to get a haircut? I think that the, 
I think they mean like during the quarantine. Um, I don't think that barbers or hairdressers are essential positions. Um, I don't, I don't know, but let's answer it according to the fundamentals of ethics. All right, here we go. We have the desire satisfaction theory. So let's read from the fundamentals of ethics what the desire satisfaction theory is. It's kind of similar to hedonism in a way. Uh, the desire satisfaction theory is a theory of human well-being that claims that the satisfaction of your actual or informed desires is necessary and sufficient to improve your welfare. So I guess really the question is not whether or not you're justified in leaving your house to get a haircut. It really comes down to whether or not you want to get a haircut. Some people don't want to get a haircut. Some other people during the midst of a quarantine cut their own hair. Maybe you could look into that, but it really depends on what it is that you want. Ooh, this one's a little personal, I think. Um, building yourself for the future or helping your family now. That is an ethical dilemma. Um, let's see how we can answer that according to the fundamentals of ethics. They're all sticking together because they're post-it notes. <clears throat> Ooh, all right, here's a good one. Consequentialism. This will really not be helpful for you if this was a personal question, so I'm sorry. Uh, but consequentialism, according to the fundamentals of ethics, is a family of normative ethical theories that share the idea that morality of actions, policies, and motives, or rules depend upon their producing the best actual or expected results. So... You really can't know what the best thing to do is for either yourself or your family, but whatever can result in the best consequences of your actions, that's what you should do. Um, and so that really doesn't even answer your question, but that's what you're supposed to do according to consequentialism. Uh, if I was answering my own thoughts of what it is that you would do, I would recommend that you look into Kierkegaard's existentialism and you can kind of have a better idea of what it means to be a moral person through that lens. But I'm not doing that because that's not the part of the fundamentals. That's, we, have to do the, we have to do the thing that we do. But best of luck to you. All right, next one. Uh, okay. The ethical dilemma is I eat poop. So let's answer, let's answer that according to, according to one of them. Oh gosh. Okay. It's moral nihilism. If you eat poop, it really doesn't matter according to moral nihilism. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, let's see, is using Chegg for a homework assignment wrong? I don't know what Chegg is, so maybe. Chegg appears nowhere in the fundamentals of ethics, so I guess maybe there are some things that we, we can't answer with the fundamentals. Let's try another one. Do I pee in the kitchen sink or not? I don't know if you pee in the kitchen sink or not, but I think the question, the ethical dilemma is, should I be allowed to or should I pee in the kitchen sink or not? But whether or not you do pee in the kitchen sink, I don't know. So let's let's find out which, what we should do. Ooh, interesting. We have, oh, it's stuck to my fingers. Feminist ethics. I think that uh, you should, according, oh, let me read what feminist ethics is. For those of you who don't know what feminist ethics are, a family of theories that emphasize the moral equality of women and the importance of attending to women's experience in the development of moral ideas and ideals. So how does that relate to peeing in the sink? Kitchen sink. There it is. It's the kitchen. If you pee, you have to pee in every sink. You have to pee in the kitchen sink, you gotta pee in the bathroom sink. Um, it's just, that's, that's fair, that's equal, um, and women should do the same. And we should also design sinks so that w it's easier for women to pee in them. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to live in a world where it's harder for women to pee in a sink than it is for a man. That's just me speaking based off of what I learned from the fundamentals of ethics. So, call me crazy. Next ethical dilemma, genocide. 
the question mark. I don't know how that's an ethical dilemma. It's just something bad. I guess it's like, why is it bad? Let's, that's, how we'll, that's what we'll answer. So we'll say, why is it bad? It's bad because of, okay. So according to, this is literally the easiest one, Kantian ethics. So Kantian ethics is based off of Immanuel Kant, who was, um, he had an ethical system based off of um, deontological categorical imperatives about like moral goods being the intrinsic part of good. It's kind of, it's complicated. I don't think there's a, this as a specific definition in here. It's more just a whole chapter of the book. But basically, like, good things are always good, bad things are always bad, and you should just kind of get over it. So, it's, yeah, so genocide is bad because life is good, because killing people is bad, because being nice is good. That's, that's why. Genocide, question mark. Ridiculous. I started answering a question before actually reading the... Uh, responses. So, all right, here's the, here's the ethical dilemma. <clears throat> it's from a nursing friend of mine. Due to COVID-19, most hospitals have refused to use BiPAP or CPAP at all, anywhere in the hospital, due to it being too dangerous for the staff if the patient ends up having the virus. Meanwhile, patients who traditionally would have greatly benefited from BiPAP, i.e. flash pulmonary edema or fluid overloaded patients, don't have the opportunity for non-invasive ventilation ultimately increasing their chances of further complications. This virus has totally tied the hands for patients who might not even have the virus. Ethical dilemma. What's more important, the patient's best chance of survival or the safety of the hospital staff? Wow, well, um, I just wanna say shout out to all of the nurses out there. You guys are just absolutely ridiculously amazing. Um, really, really happy to know so many of you and to hear so many of your stories. So like shout out to all of the, the nurses out there that are doing a really great job with this. Um, to answer that question, um, I can't even begin. I have no clue, no expertise, but thankfully after reading the fundamentals of ethics, um, I can try. We'll see. Um, Oh, shoot. Okay. It's ethical relativism. I guess I can't try. He goes on to say um, another ethical dilemma. The University of Michigan keep losing to Ohio's state in football. This is a serious problem. How do we fix it? Okay, dude, I couldn't answer your other question after reading The Fundamentals of Ethics. And that's what this is, The Fundamentals of Ethics, not The Fundamentals of Sports, okay? I haven't even seen Moneyball, and you think that I'm going to know how to fix this problem for you? Yeah, I get that it's serious, but... <sighs> you want Michigan to win. Have them score more points, dude. That's it. There you go. It's problem solved. Okay, here's the next one. The ethical dilemma is, is it okay to steal a family so someone will eat your bread? <laughs> uh, dude, that's called friendship, man. There's no ethical dilemma, okay? That's, if you want good friends, just make a bunch of bread, steal people, and make them eat it. That's, that's there's no ethical dilemma there. That's, it's called being a good friend. All right, here's the next one. Okay, it's a it's a trolley problem. I know that I said I didn't like trolley problems, and I don't, but um, we're gonna do it anyway. A train is going down a track towards a starving family, and you have the option to pull the lever to make the train go in a different direction. However, the train is full of bread and can feed the family. However, the bread is not yours to give. Do you pull the lever to save the family from the train even though the train has bread to feed them, even though you would have to steal the bread. I don't even know where to begin with that. Um, you know, as this has gone on, I really thought that I'd be able to answer all of these questions after reading one book, but I guess the world is just more complicated than that. It sucks. I thought that 
being able to put a couple post-it notes in a book and being able to flip through and have some quotes ready would be able to answer all of our problems, but I guess not. I guess that means I have to go read more. I have to, I have to go. Not of another book. I have to just read the same book over and over and over again until I really feel like I have a good foundation of an ethical principle and system. Uh, because I don't. And uh, for now, that's okay. But it won't be okay later. So uh, I think that that's going to have to be it. I'm not going to be able to answer this trolley problem. Not because I don't want to. And not because I can't. But because I don't know how. So I'm going to have to just stop for now. This has been a lot of fun. I don't know if I'll do something like this ever again in my life, but I am gonna be doing a lot of other things. So if you like this video, feel free to like, hit the button on the, the one that's the thumbs up, and, uh, and definitely subscribe. But in the meantime, I love you, peace, and God bless you. I hope that you continue to stay safe, sane, and healthy. See ya.